Hi, I'm Erica Gamet and welcome back. In this video, we're going to jump back into grep in InDesign. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to find not only patterns of text, but we're going to break those patterns of text into groups so that we can manipulate those groups individually using the Find Change dialog box. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. One of the big advantages of using Find Change when working with grep is that you can take the text that you have found using grep and you can add, delete, or rearrange the text that you've found. And the way that you do that is you have to not only describe the pattern of text you're looking for, but also break that pattern into individual groups. And to illustrate that, I have these phone numbers. So the group in the upper left in the black text is, when I look at it, I see that that looks like a phone number. It's a 10-digit number with some familiar uh, area codes, the first three digits of that number. So obviously these are North American phone numbers. Um, so when I look at that, I think, okay, that's great. And how I want to format them is to have dashes between the sets of numbers. And in these phone numbers, we have three digits, which represent the area code another three digits, which represents the prefix, and then the final four digits. So what I want to do is not only tell it, find where there's a string of 10 digits in a row, but I would also like to do something to that. And in this case, I would like to put dashes between it. And then in addition, this sample, I have it turning red just so that we can see that happening. So I want to be able to click on this item here and tell it, find uh, what fits this pattern, and then create what we have down here. So to do that, we need to, like I say, break it into groups. So you have to be able to visualize what are the groups that we're going to have. And we can build on this and build on that, and we will in future videos, but we're going to make it pretty simple in this case. I'm going to do Find Change, so I'm going to do Command or Control F. So I'm actually going to turn that on so we can see that. And I am going to limit it to the story. So when I'm working with grep, I try to limit where that um, search happens so that I'm not searching my entire document because I might have 10 digit part numbers on another page and I don't want to accidentally format those like phone numbers. So I tend to say story. So I have the story selected that I want and I've chosen just the story. Next up, I need to tell it what it is I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for 10 digits. Now, in a previous video, we talked about how to do a wildcard for any digit, and that's backslash D. And remember, at any time, if you can't remember what something is, it may live in the secret menu over here off to the side. So I could look in my wildcards and see that any digit is indeed backslash D. But I'm going to leave that there. And I could put backslash D 10 times, and that will tell me that I'm looking for 10 digits in a row, and that's certainly a valid way to do it. I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to do it um, so that you don't have to uh, you don't have to put that 10 times. I can tell it specifically how many times. So I can go ahead and put a little bracket and it's a curly bracket, excuse me, or curly braces. So it's a squiggly bracket or curly bracket, whatever you want to call that. And I can put a number in there and I can say 10 and put the closing brackets as well. So now what that's going to do is it's going to find a string of 10 digits. When I do that, it finds that first string of 10 digits. So that saves me having to put that that many times. In addition, when you're working with uh, digits, or I'm sorry, in uh, instances of how many times something occurs, you can also, instead of putting 10, an exact number in here, we can also put a comma afterwards, which in this case means 10 or more. Or we might have a range. Maybe we, need, we know it's exactly 10 to 12 digits only is what we're looking for. So I might put 10, comma, 12. So that's 10 to 12. In our case, though, we're only looking for three digits, actually, because what we need to do is we need to break this group into three digits, three digits, and four digits. So we're going to end up with three separate groups. Because in the end, we want to number these. We want to say the first group, number one, will be this 800 or 303 or 720. And then we want to put a dash between those. We wanted to find the next set of three. Then we'll put a dash and then the next set of four. And again, the reason we're doing this is that we don't know the exact numbers. We just know how many numbers there are, how many digits there are that we're looking for. So in this case, I need to come up here and say, look for any digit. And then in between the curly brackets, just move my cursor inside there. I'm going to tell it three because I'm looking for exactly three. 
and I'm going to tell it this is a group. So you can either spell it all out and then put uh, parentheses around each group, or you can do each group as you work. I've also seen sometimes people put an opening, oops, sorry, an opening and a closing parenthesis, and then move their cursor back in to fill it in, however you find it easiest to work. It's hard because the grep window is kind of small. But in this case, I'm gonna put backslash D, three, because I know I'm looking for three numbers, and I'm gonna put parentheses around that. So I'm just gonna use my cursor to go back to the beginning. And that's group number one, all right? So I'm gonna keep track of that, that's group number one. Then I'm going to put another group, so I'll go ahead and put my opening parenthesis. And again, because remember, if I was looking for an exact parenthesis, an actual literal parenthesis, I would have to escape that by putting that backslash. But in this case, these parentheses mean something special. They're putting them into groups, followed by any digit, and then it's going to be three times again. And I'll put my closing parenthesis. That's group number two. Now group number three is any digit, followed by the bracket, followed by four, because it's exactly four digits that we're looking for. And I need to close that with another closing parenthesis. I'm just gonna zoom out for a second, and all I want to do is see if this finds this pattern. Now it would do it even if I put backslash D and the 10 in brackets, it would have found it, but it'll also find it this way. And it finds it in groups. Now you don't know that it's in groups because all it did was say find the pattern. We haven't told what to do with it yet. And that's where the magic of the find change comes in, is that I can now take these groups and tell it find these patterns, but I can do something with the groups individually. I could either rearrange them, I could have it come back and bring me group three, then two, then one. My phone number will be in groups backwards. But in this case, I wanna keep it in the same number. I could also, if I wanted to, drop off that, um, I could drop off the first one. If I didn't need the area code, I could drop that off by not returning or, re or showing group number one. But in this case, I want group number one, two, and three to remain, but I wanna put some uh, dashes in between. So I come down here to the change to field, and I say, find uh, when I find it fits the pattern, take that first group, those three numbers, those three digits, and that is under found or found text, and it's found text one, which is group one. Or we can just type in dollar sign one. So in this case, dollar sign, even though it's in the change to field, and in the change to field, we often don't have a lot of special characters. Dollar sign is one of them. So change it to dollar sign one, which is group number one, and then I want it to have a dash or a hyphen. So I'm just going to type in the dash. So nothing special, just the dash. Followed by group number two, which is dollar sign two, followed by a dash, followed by group number three. So it's gonna fit that pattern, but it's gonna do something special to it. Or if I didn't want that, if I didn't want dashes here, I could instead tell it that I wanted this to be parentheses. And in here, parentheses don't mean anything. Let's delete all that. I can do an open parenthesis, dollar sign, one for group number one, parenthesis, and a space. So maybe I want it like that. So instead of all dashes, we put a parenthesis around the, um, the area code but I'm gonna keep it so it looks like our sample and delete that. So we have group number one, dash group number two, dash group number three. And I'm also gonna change the formatting just to a character style I have in orange, just so we can see it happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to do the entire story. I'll just say change all. Three searches were, or three replacements were made. And I'll say okay, and it added that for us. Again, I can undo that and we could return these in a different order. Maybe we want it to be group number three followed by, just for fun, we'll put in dots, followed by group number two, followed by group number one. Change all, and it puts it in there completely backwards with dots in there as well. I'm gonna undo that, so we're back to normal. So we can see that we can group things together and rearrange it. And like I said, the reason this works so well in the fine, or that um, it makes the fine change special is that you cannot do this when you're working with grep in style. So this has to be something that's done fine change. If you add more numbers, maybe someone you're working on a directory and you've stylized everything and somebody brings you the new directory, you've got a new set of phone numbers, you will have to run the fine change dialog again. But remember, once you have that saved or once you have that perfected, come up here to the query and save that and give it a name so that you don't have to remember that again at all um, because we don't have to remember how we formatted that or what we did to it. We just wanna have it in the query menu, menu ready for next time so that our grep is uh, there and available for us 
right away. So I hope that explains groups and how we can change things and find things that fit a pattern, but then really manipulate that pattern afterwards. Hopefully you can see where you would use grep in an upcoming project. Um, maybe you have a question about something that you think grep might be the answer for, or maybe you found a really cool grep expression that you've used in one of your projects. Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know that you like this type of content, and also subscribe to the channel so that you get notified when I put up new videos. I do release new videos every Wednesday, and I wanna hear from you though. I wanna hear what things you'd like to hear about. Maybe it's not grep, maybe it's something else, maybe it's not InDesign. Uh, again, let me know either in the comments below or use the social media links that are off to the side or you can always click down below on the uh, my website which is ericagammon.com and no matter where you contact me, be sure to use the hashtag learn with Erica and that way I can keep a good track and find those questions for you and um, I, like I said, I want to hear from you. Let me know what you want to see so we can cover that next week. So until next time, bye-bye.